During high school we had quite a encouraging art program that used to put people in advance so I did my GCSE two years early. There was a lot of after school art clubs and things like that and then we did the A level early so at that point I started to really concentrate on painting and, and trying to really do the form, do figures and start to make things look a bit more cinematic and the evolution of work started there. I try and make my paintings look cinematic to kind of put it in that feel that they belong to a story. So whether it's, you know, a widescreen canvas or quite stylized lighting or lots of little nods to the visual language of cinema. The realism and the, the style and the technique that I've developed has really come about from trying to create images that reference cinema and films and they're kind of a lot of exterior or night shots or things that would be quite difficult to kind of do from life. So when I was taking images that I'm going to use as source material, that influences how the paintings come out when I'm actually doing it with oil paint. I think with a painting, it's, uh, as a viewer, you're very aware that there's a, an artist behind it or somebody who's created it. So that kind of makes everything seem a bit more purposeful, like there's intent. So every small element, whether it's a little you know, book on the side shelf or hopefully it feels like it's deliberate and then you can start to you know, inject reasons about why the artist has chosen to, to create the work in that way and it, I think it encourages you to add meaning to it. In the broken light of day Normally as a starting point, I think of the image that I'm, I'm working on and then set about trying to find a, either a model or a, a location and then stitch them together on Photoshop to make a little composite of, of how I'm going to do it. And then when it comes to the canvas, I do quite a detailed line drawing to start off with and get all the, the key proportions in, sometimes using measurements and rules and things like that. So then I um, fill in the canvas and, and block it in, completely cover it and remove all of the white. And at that point, that's when I start to really paint it, you know, with some detail. And I normally work from the, the background and some of the darker tones and, and build it forward and closer and closer and layers. If I was doing a face, I might do some of the, the darker textures and then build out highlights on top of that. And yeah, it's just a, a matter of building detail and layers and observing and trying to get as many of the small little tones in as I can. One of my uh, favourite artists who's a big influence is Gregory Critzen, who he's a, a photographer who makes these huge budget um, photographs. That, uh, they're very much staged and they've, they've almost got the crew of a, a film set. But they're, they're very interesting because they tell a story in one, there's like single shot movies, I think he describes them as, which is obviously, you know, something that I'm interested in doing. Another big influence is Edward Hopper. Pretty much since I started painting, I was really drawn to his work. I think it's the way he uses light. He, um, even when it's an empty room and it's just sunlight splashing through it still kind of feels like it's even a story. It kind of feels like there's an absence of people in it. Also thematically they're, they're quite interesting. A lot of hotel rooms, empty bars, late night, you know, cinemas and things like that. Things that all feel quite poetic and things that I can identify with. It can be quite lonely at times being an artist. It is uh, a lot of time sat in a room on your own. So I try and work out different ways to, to make it less lonely, whether it's working with people, whether it's like doing portraits where I've got, you know, uh, working with models or when almost there it was working with different bands. And, you know, if you're not like excited about the thing that you're painting, if it's, you know, more of a commission or something, then it's, it is less exciting to be in a room on your own. But if you're enthusiastic for it, then, you know, it's, it's quite a lucky job. I kind of view projects uh, each time of the year, kind of year and a half sort of timeline. So then I aim towards the end of that project. And there's always a feeling of once, when I've just done it and worked so hard and kind of put everything into it, then you kind of, it's a bit weird to kind of think what to do next. And I think after every major project, I've had a period of um, considering other options or, or thinking, you know, questioning the wisdom of my career choice. But, you know, that kind of wears off and you then start getting excited about the next thing and, and work on that. Sometimes things don't always go quite to plan and uh, things will fail and, you know, 
But hopefully it's all a, a learning curve, I think. Since I put on my first exhibition when I just graduated, I think I've learned a lot from what, from the most recent one that I've done. And there's parts, uh, you know, where to put the energy and what's most successful. And, and hopefully I'll learn, you know, for the next one. I'm a bit of a control freak. And at the beginning, I definitely wanted to do absolutely everything. And, and it seems a little bit pointless now, actually, when, when there's a lot to be done, if you want it to kind of go to the next level. So, so that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. Life. The plan that I'm currently working on that may change, but um, I'd like to use actors and try and get some well-known people and some recognisable faces. And, um, and not to do them as straight portraits, but to do them as um, in scenes, kind of closer to the almost their paintings. Um, at the moment I'm considering asking them uh, what role have you always wanted to play but never got the chance, and then depict them acting that role and to do them quite big and cinematic. And um, I think hopefully it will it will have the element of musician portraits where there's some interesting subjects and get some really good faces and also it should be interesting to see what they bring uh, to that if it involves them and it's, it's slightly collaborative because they will have an input of the role that they are depicted playing and also you know use some acting chops to, to, to model for it so, so that's the plan that I'm, I'm currently building towards. Because I'm always working on um, like a project that takes a year, it always feels like it's gearing towards the end of that and the completion. And the whole thing kind of consumes my life and so much my thoughts and energies and, and trying to create this big, perfect project. You want it to be the best you can be. And, and I feel that there's an expectation that everything will be okay after that. Like once you've done that, like this is the milestone that you reach. Certainly, for, for example, like musician portraits, I thought when I got to the end of that, that that will give you more artistic recognition, it'll kind of step up there and then you'll and you'll have made it, you'll be an artist. And after that was finished, there's certainly a sense of almost anticlimax that things just carry on and it, it did well, but you know, it's still got to think about the next thing and it's hard not to kind of get bummed out by it really and realise you just got to keep going and, and keep revolving on it and, and perhaps it's more about the, the journey of actually doing it rather than the destination. And I've got nothing but my songs to I walk with you and all the bells start to ring My heart is broken but my courage